All right, now we're going to calculate the intrinsic value of this business. And this little table here, where we write intrinsic value, and initially it's going to give us the enterprise value since we're doing unlevered free cash flow here. But then we want to add the cash and deduct the debt so we can arrive at the equity value as well. And I'm just going to put a border on this so that we have a neatly organized little table here. So this formula right here is going to be equal to XNPV, which we've covered in other courses, but as a refresher, the XNPV applies specific dates to cash flows. So it is a far superior form of discounting than regular NPV. The discount rate, which we've set up here at 12%, it's the weighted average cost of capital, and then the corresponding cash flows and dates for this transaction. So here are the cash flows. You'll notice zero cash flows being received on the date of the transaction close, but we need to include that so that we discount the cash flow all the way back to this first date here. So we've now matched the cash flows to the dates that we laid out above. And when I press enter, we get this enterprise value for the business. Now what we can do is just adjust for cash and debt to arrive at equity value and equity value per share. So now what we're going to do is we're going to link the cash from the balance sheet and we're going to pick the cash at the end of 2017 as that's the closest to the transaction date that we have a cash balance for. So we'll take the cash there and then we'll take the debt off the balance sheet as well at the end of 2017, the closest number we have to the transaction date. And then we can calculate the equity value being the enterprise value plus the cash minus the debt. We can go one step further and down here we can put the equity value. Per share. And in order to calculate that we take the equity value and we divide it by up in the assumptions here, we outline the number of shares outstanding. So we get $35.40 per share. I'm actually going to go ahead and format this to really stand out. Since this is the main value that we're looking for in this model. Now we've got our intrinsic value per share for this business and our intrinsic enterprise value for this business using the XNPV function.